Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Shay Ali here with you on Inspired Online. And today I've got the very great pleasure of introducing the wonderful John Gray. Uh, now, John, well, if you haven't heard of him, where have you been? Because you really should have. He's written uh, what USA Today has described one of the top 10 most influential books of all time, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And in my personal experience, um, even the friends I have that are not into personal development have probably read at least that book. And I know that it was probably the first books I, one of the first books I read on that subject as well. Um, he's been interviewed by Oprah. He's written 21 best-selling books. He's helped relationships all over the world, whether they be in business, in personal, or in health as well, because good health and good relationships are so important to have hand in hand. And I'm truly honoured to have one of the greatest teachers of our time here with us on Inspired today. So John, welcome. And I'm going to ask you our first question, which we ask everyone, which is, if you had to share your wisdom with the world in a nutshell, what would you say? Uh, love is the answer. And stress inhibits love. How to lower stress, love, is how to master love, at least know how to do it. You can't always do it perfectly. So three guidelines. The first is you're responsible for your unhappiness, not your partner, period. You're responsible for your happiness, not your partner. Think of it in terms of 80% of your happiness comes from you and your life, not dependent on your partner. 20% can come from your partner and make you feel happier. But when you're looking to your partner for everything, you will always be dissatisfied. You will have less love and then they will have less love. We are responsible for what we get in our lives. That's number one. If we're not getting it, we really don't know better. <clears throat> one of the major places that we don't know better is the second guideline here. One is the uh, taking responsibility for your happiness, not blaming your partner. Mm -hmm. Two, understanding how many women are different. Because when you uh, don't understand the differences in a positive light, you constantly misunderstand the differences in a negative light. Mm -hmm. And then you believe fake news. You tell yourself things like, oh, you know, she's too negative. Oh, she doesn't appreciate me. Oh, uh, he doesn't love me. Oh, I can't get what I need from him. These are all lies. We're telling ourselves lies and everybody believes it. I see it every day when couples have problems. And three, particularly, I'm gonna put the third one in there. There could be a lot of other ones, but particularly during the uh, COVID time where people are uh, locked down in jail in their homes, uh, there's <clears throat> a lot of <clears throat> anger and violence. And because people don't understand, one, how many women are different, how we cope with stress differently. Two, we're not taking responsibility for our own happiness. We blame our partners. And three, to avoid violence, stop talking. <laughs> stop talking. There's nothing more potent to destroy a relationship than, vi than talking. Uh, if you, women, you need to talk to other women. You got a phone to do that. You got your cell phone. That's it. Stop talking to your husband unless you've got something good to say. This is not a time. This is a time of stress. So you have to take precautions. If it's a cold, wintry day, you put on a jacket, right? And then, then you're not cold. Okay, so this is a cold, wintry day. You have to do something unusual. You know, summertime, I take off the jacket. I sit in the sun. But this is not the summertime. You got to put on a jacket. Now, what does a jacket mean? You change your expectations, change your requirements, and stop mm -hmm. talking. Oh, Women will talk, and when they're stressed, they talk about what's bothering them. And that makes men who are stressed feel like they're being blamed, period. He can't listen. He reacts back. And if you happen to be in a relationship where you've had sex, you have what's called mirror cells. They're activated. If your partner's not loving you, you, you start, stop loving them. It's period. That's biology if you're in a fight or flight state. So step three, stop talking. 
and do what you have to do without depending on your partner to get out of your stress reaction. How do you know you're in a stress reaction? You don't feel loving towards your partner. You don't feel grateful and happy. If you're not feeling grateful and happy and appreciative and respectful, you're not loving. You're out of balance. Get it. So many people feel like victims. Oh, my partner's doing this to me. No, you're not being loving. Even to blame your partner, you're not, your heart's not open. If you want to blame your partner, it should be, I forgive you. You know, forgiveness is, yeah, I blame you, but I let go of it. Amazing. I, this is what we have to get. So, but John, I love I'll do my three things to sum it up. Take responsibility <laughs> for 80% of your happiness and your partner's job is to make you happier. One. Two, understand how men and women are different. We'll get into that because people don't understand how men and women are different. So it's like I'm saying, uh, uh, learn how to fly a jet plane. You don't know how, so that's the problem. You don't know how to fly a jet plane. People do not understand how men and women are different in a positive way. They understand how we're different in a negative way. Oh, men do this, men do this. Men are criminals, men are violent, women are bitches, women don't understand, men never, ha women are happy, women are too demanding. We got all this negative baloney stuff because that's what we experience. If we don't have a positive way to understand our differences, then our differences delight us. Mm -hmm. And when they don't delight us, it's because we're not taking responsibility for our happiness, step one. And step three is stop talking if you're in a fight or flight response and learn what you need to do in order to provide your inner fulfillment. Take 100% responsibility. That's it, three, three. Okay, so I just finished up. So those are the three basic points. Indeed, thank you for that, John. And I love you know, the overall summary of that, which was love is the answer and stress does not create love. So what John spoke us through there was the three steps to really reduce stress and increase love, particularly at these times. Um, now let's start with maybe that first concept of, of stress that you talked about, um, coupled with that um, concept of how men and women are different. Now, there are people out there that will say, you know, it's all about equality right now and we're the same and we should be treated the same. What would you say to people who have those sorts of views? <laughs> we have to go beyond the idea that equality means sameness. See, it's ironic that we have one whole movement of equality as sameness and at the same time, huge conferences on diversity, that we're all different. <laughs> <laughs> there's diversity Indeed. and there's sameness. <clears throat> Equality means respect, equal respect, equal opportunity. We should not all be treated the same way, except we should all be treated with respect. If I am sick with the flu, I need different vitamins than if I'm sick with something else, okay, or if I'm healthy. We all, are, at different times, we have different needs. And what I point out is the factual truth. Now, we're no longer talking my book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, where these were my observations. You can always argue with somebody's opinion. It won out because 100, 100 million <laughs> book sales, people's changed their Indeed. lives. But where did that come from? People are rather jealous. <clears throat> I understand that. I used to be jealous of people with success. So, so it came from just noticing in my counseling sessions that many women were misunderstanding each other. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's no big research study, nothing. I just said, hey, you know, when a guy's in his cave, I'd say to women, you know, that's what I do. I need that time. I need to pull away, rebuild myself. Then I come out with more love. What's the big deal? We don't need, mm -hmm. you know, men are different. If you look at every man, if a man uh, goes to the gym and works his muscles, he needs to rest. If he doesn't rest, his muscles don't grow back, period. And, and if women, you go to the gym, work out your muscles, you need to rest too and you need to rebuild your muscles. But rebuilding muscles doesn't help women feel better. Their biology is different. Women come and pay me to talk. <laughs> Very <laughs> few men will pay me $500 an hour to talk to me. They will come if there's a problem and they want my expertise to solve the problem. Women often come to me because they think they have a problem and they want my expertise to solve it. They think that because they're on their male side. They're like men. 
and I don't give them a solution. I always say, well, I have to understand the problem better. And I get them to talk and I get them to look at their feelings. And, you know, before I talked about the 80-20 rule, uh, there's also another rule I suggest, a law, 90-10 principle. When you're emotionally upset, 90% of it is your past. <laughs> you know, if, you, <laughs> if you've been cheated 50 times, <clears throat> lost all your money, and then somebody says, trust me, you're not going to trust them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <clears throat> That's called your past. Your past is always with you. It doesn't go away. We have to heal the past, learn from it, grow from it, be grateful for it a lot. People haven't done that. They just sweep it away. It's gone, thinking it doesn't affect them. <clears throat> that's the 90-10 rule. And that's not original. Everything in psychology, this huge booming industry, everything is based on the 90-10 rule. They just don't say it so clearly. Everything you're feeling is 90% has nothing to do with what just happened. Okay, get that. You're like a three-year-old. When you're angry, you're a child. When you're feeling hurt, you're a child. You're a monkey. You're literally the part of the brain which is like a monkey, the fight or flight center in the brain, amygdala. That's controlling you. So we need to get that we are monkeys and sometimes we're humans capable of love, unconditional love, capable of forgiveness, capable of compassion, not just empathy, compassion, which is there's a distinction. Empathy nice. is, oh, I feel bad too. I'm, I'm a victim. We're a victim. We all... Yeah, I've been mistreated by the world. That can be empathy. Compassion is, aren't you lucky to have me to listen to you? <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow's a better day. It's not like we're victims. Compassion is, yeah, I know your pain. I felt pain before. And if they're talking to me, I feel like, aren't you, isn't it a great day that you get to talk to me? Because when you can talk about your pain and somebody stays like an adult and hears your pain and also knows that it's going to be healed, that tomorrow can be a better day, and that you're not powerless, and sees the good while you're also feeling the pain. That's healing. So anyway, what I learned was that under stress, women would come into my office, and they'd want me to solve their problem. But ironically, they'd always say, you know, my husband, he's always interrupting me, always wants to fix me, he doesn't listen to me. And then they want me to fix them. <laughs> <laughs> I not listen to that. I say, well, help me understand your feelings, what's going on. And I don't tell them right away that your feelings are 90-10, although that's the foundation of psychology. It just sort of wow. seems a little rude to say, you know, you're upset over nothing except your childhood. <clears throat> right. Of course. But when, it, when the childhood comes up, it doesn't say, hi, hi, I'm your unresolved feelings about childhood. <laughs> it says, it's my <laughs> husband, it's my wife. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, if you're a guy and you know, you feel cheated and you feel undervalued. You don't get paid enough and you're angry uh, and you come home and your wife says, you know, one little thing, like you forgot to turn out the lights. So how did you forget to do this? You get all upset. But if you like feel like wonderful, life is great. She says, oh, you forgot to turn out the lights. You go, oh, let me turn out those lights. <laughs> it's no big deal. Indeed. The moment, present time is no big deal. And same thing with COVID virus. It's no big deal if you're healthy. If you're young okay. and healthy, it's no big deal. People should get that. I see people jogging with masks on. What are they, crazy? <laughs> they're just breathing <laughs> in their own germs. <laughs> Out driving, their, they're in their cars alone and they've got a mask on. What are these idiots? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say idiots. If they're no, following, okay. it's, it's the, following the, the nonsense. If you're healthy, this is 0.01% of people die. 0.1% of people or even more die every year. It's just concentrated right now because the people who are taking heart disease medicines, what they don't tell you is that <clears throat> they say people with compromised immune system. Okay, what that means, if you're taking medications, <clears throat> if you're taking particularly the uh, heart medications for lowering your blood pressure, you're vulnerable. There's nobody that dies. <laughs> from COVID that's not taking blood pressure medication. And oh, wow. we're all waiting. We're all waiting for, see in a marriage, we're waiting for our partner to make us happy. Right now, we're waiting for the, the vaccination to protect us. Are you kidding? There's always gonna be viruses. There always has been viruses. And it wipes out the people who are ready to die. And they're, all these people, the people who are vulnerable, I'm okay keeping people alive. They're in the old folks' homes. They're, 
they're taking the medications. They should be protected. They should be quarantined. Yes, that's what has to happen. If you're healthy, it's not a problem. So <clears throat> we should be saying to everybody, if you want to make sure, you know what your vaccination is? Your vaccination is exercise. Nobody has died of COVID virus. Imagine they go on TV and they said, you know, we're not waiting for the, to vaccinate every single person on the planet. What we have to do is everybody needs to exercise. If you do aerobic exercise three times a week, good 30 minutes, that's all we're talking about. How about take responsibility for your health? You know, good aerobic exercise. You will, nobody gets the COVID virus. Nobody gets dies. Most people don't even get sick at all if you're doing exercise. Or let's say, what are you eating? Are you a junk food addict? Well, you're gonna get sick. If you eat hospital food, guess what? You're gonna get sick. That's the worst food you can buy. Eat real food. Don't go to the hospital. Don't go and eat junk food. Right now we see so much happening is that you know, normally if you had a flu and you got sick, you wouldn't go to the hospital. You would just stay home in bed and drink lots of fluids. But now, True. As soon as you're coughing, you go to the hospital. So all these <laughs> hospital admissions, you know, and then you, you get tested. Yes, you got the virus. Oh, you're going to stay here now. The sickest place you can be is in a hospital. The worst food is there. It's filled with germs everywhere. So you're going to get more COVID germs. It's the more germs you get. You think you get a little germ, it's going to get you. It's like if you're drinking in the germs all the time, yes, you're going to be more affected by it. So mm. <clears throat> simple wisdom. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's very common sense, fed. actually. We're being, we're being fed madness. And now I just noticed they're saying, oh, and the children, they're getting this. Before the children uh, were not getting the problem. Now we see there's a 0.001% of children get some sickness. That's so insignificant when you're comparing it to 300 million people, 100 million children, something like that. Yeah, you're yeah, talking little tiny numbers. They're dying anyway. And hey, why don't you save your children by having them exercise <laughs> and giving them <laughs> food? That's, we don't need vaccinations. We don't need to keep them out of the school. None of that stuff. We do need to protect people who are on heart medicine. And those people yes. on heart medicine, they should practice going off the heart medicine, taking vitamin C and jogging. Not jogging, exercise. It doesn't have to be jogging. It's proven meditation lowers your blood pressure. Oh, guess what? We need to vaccinate everybody on the planet. They all need to learn to meditate 20 minutes a day. What's the big deal? They all need to exercise 30 minutes, three times a week, get their aerobic exercise. No, I'm saying wow. that. <laughs> no, right. in right. fact, no government is saying that, but no. it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yes, yes, we need to wake up. What are we being told? And then we sit and we watch all this stuff. Do you know anything you hear on TV goes into your subconscious mind as if it's a fact? Wow. As and, is it, a fact. and is there a reason why it's TV specifically that makes that go into your subconscious mind as a fact? Because you're watching it. If you're watching <laughs> authority, you're watching it. Just the fact of you watching it. You know, if I wanted to put, if I, I'm also a hypnotist, okay? So, I mean, when yes. I can do hypnosis, therapeutic hypnosis, all right? So, it, the first thing you do when you hypnotize a person, you say, relax. Okay, forget about your problem. Be here in the moment. Okay, sitting down in front of a TV, you're going to forget about your other problem. You're distracted now. And then you say, now raise your arm and put your arm down. Raise your arm and put your arm down. Now you're in a subjective, you're in a hypnotic trance because you followed my instruction. Pick up the remote control and turn it on and you're now in a hypnotic state where you're going to receive suggestions and you're going to, it goes right to the subconscious mind because you're holding that as an authority. Mm -hmm. You're holding that as news, which is real. It's fake news. Fake news means that part of it could be true, but they're not telling the whole picture. I have no doubt that New York City is having a big epidemic of people going into those hospitals. What they're not telling you is that those people that are going in the hospitals first of all, are all on blood pressure medications. So wow. then everybody would go, oh, blood pressure medications. But they're not going to tell you that because people are going to say, how could I get off my blood pressure medications? <laughs> well, you would <laughs> exercise three times a week and practice meditation and it's proven to lower your blood pressure. Fact. 
and a vaccination. We're all waiting for a vaccination. Do you know that the flu vaccination rarely helps anybody? It's the wow. proven fact. More people get the flu when they take the flu vaccination. And they always say, well, that's because the vaccination's always changing. Uh, the, the virus is always adapting and changing. That's right. Oh, so dear. The COVID. <laughs> What yeah. they want, okay, this is like big business. They, what they want is a chip inside your body that you all, everybody have you had your vaccination and you'll need a vaccination every year because you'll always be chasing the vaccination, the virus, instead of just exercising three times a week, meditation, 20 minutes a day, proven to lower your blood pressure, go off of your blood pressure medications, now, my brothers, I have several brothers who had heart disease. I don't. I have perfect blood pressure. They Wonderful. They, you, you follow your own advice, I take it, right? Yes. I exercise three times a week. I meditate every day. That's it. I'm 69 years old. I also have sex a couple times a week. So that helps Lovely. as well. <laughs> you don't have to have that. It's just that's one of the outcomes of being healthy. If, if you ask anybody who dies of COVID virus, when was the last time you had sex? Period. Never. <laughs> <laughs> not where I was expecting this to go, but <laughs> it's, it's they're not telling you the whole truth. They're not looking at that. They're, nobody's going to make any money telling you that you should be having sex. No, or, or, and here's the other side of it, just to get a little uh, out of the playfulness, because our society doesn't allow you to talk about this, is masturbation. Okay, if men masturbate, they're also weakening their immune system. It goes, their testosterone goes down half. Just wow. go six days, six days without masturbating and being aroused and sexual, your testosterone levels double. Amazing. So you can never do that. Up, just kissing and loving and massaging once a week will keep your testosterone up if you're a man. And if a man, if a woman's with a guy with no testosterone, you're gonna, your estrogen levels are gonna drop and that causes stress in women. So back to counseling. <laughs> 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 Although I do love the playful, John. Thank you for that too. <laughs> back, back to counseling, we have women would come in and I would get them to feel their emotions. I don't tell them what they're feeling is nothing about their husband, really. It's a husband is a trigger and uh, their life is a trigger. Their children are a trigger. Their thinking is a trigger. It's bringing up issues from your childhood. So creating a safe space and understanding therapists can help them see that 90% of their upset is not about now. But it takes a while to get them to that place. Just hearing mm -hmm. her with her complaints and not trying to solve the problem forces her to stay in her feelings. You see, feelings, when, you, when somebody listens to your emotions, and this is how I learned this. The women would come in. I gave no advice other than to understand them better. Feel what mm -hmm. they feel. Connect to their pain. They would leave happy. Wow. That's what lowers stress. So I wrote a whole book, a whole book, how many women cope with stress differently. Women cope with stress by talking about what they feel. Now, if you talk about what you feel and you're trying to change someone, it doesn't lower your stress. That's mm -hmm. called complaining. <laughs> sharing, sharing is telling somebody what you feel inside and you're not trying to change them in any way but you're wanting them to connect with you. That's it. You just want to have someone connect with you. But if you're trying to get somebody to change, I mean, you need to understand you stepped on my foot, okay? And I'm going to tell you how hurt I am and how much I'm going to punish you. <laughs> all that ridiculous, absurd monkey behavior, which we all do, by the way. I've done, I've done, still. Sometimes I sure feel like, have. yeah. So this is what, this is our human dilemma. This is why we all have these problems. <laughs> so, so we, but we have to step back and go, wait a second, what is going on here? Have some knowledge of what's going on. 90-10 principle, you're upset. It's not about your partner. 80-20 principle, 80% 80 of your happiness needs to come from your life. 20% mm -hmm. from your partner. And the problem, once you get into, into uh, staying in the home all the time, is that you don't have your normal 80% that you you have a life. You know, your life is not just staying at home all the time. Your life is it's interacting really with people. It's being in the energy field of other people. It's helping other people. It's mm -hmm. learning, it's growing, it's caring, it's sharing. It's a village, it's a life. It's not just this person. So here's a nice way of understanding it. We all know on a health level, we need vitamins. Okay? Our, a good diet uh, 
Indeed. provides vitamins. I mean, I, I'm eating out of my garden right now. You know, I'm growing the food in my garden. I'm having my salads and my tomatoes and my cucumbers. And oh, the whole that's thing. incredible. Yes, it's wonderful. I go out there and pick it and eat it. It's, uh, I don't want to go to the grocery store, not because I'm afraid of anybody. I don't want to wait in those long lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I feel like I'm some kind of uh, mindless, obedient sheep, okay? It, everybody's got their masks on. Like, I need to be worried about giving the virus or having the virus. I mean, it's absurd. It's completely right. nuts. Okay. But we all were told over and over until it makes sense, until it's logical. And it does make sense unless you look at all the other things. See, you mm. focus on one little thing. Yeah, that's the problem. But you look at the bigger picture. Are you doing your exercise? And also, in, I did get a flu in January. I was in China. I was in Wuhan. I could have brought it to well, America. Really? Wow. Yes, yes. I was in Wuhan in China. I came home. I did have a, a, a cold, kind of a flu thing. It was gone. So I've done it. You know, it would be good for people to get that test to see that you already had it and, you, and you're not a carrier mm -hmm. of it. I'm not a carrier of it. I've been through it. I've got the antibodies. <laughs> it wasn't a big it's deal. It's, it's so easy. So I'm not of any danger to anybody. And, and enough on that, coming back to our relationship. So basically, we need to recognize if we don't have a life, and that's been taken away from so many people, now mm -hmm. you're missing certain vitamins that you need. We all need vitamins. So let's go through them. Vitamin A, vitamin B, several vitamin D, B, Bs to stay calm and cool. We need vitamin C for our immune system. We need vitamin D, which doesn't come from our food so much. It comes from the sun. Wow. Okay, so we need the sun and the vitamin E. Okay. And then the other vitamin E exercise. So those are all the vitamins we need. Now imagine you've got a life and your life provides vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, and vitamin E, but your life doesn't provide vitamin D. Mm. Then you're not going to be healthy. And suddenly vitamin D comes along, your husband or your wife, and you feel fantastic. Oh, you made me so happy. I feel so much better because of you. And then your mind starts thinking, if I'm unhappy, I need vitamin D. So anytime I'm unhappy, it's vitamin D that I need. And why is vitamin D ignoring me? And why is vitamin D not listening to me? And why is vitamin D making a mess? Suddenly vitamin D, uh, if it's not making you feel so good, is a bad problem. And the, really the problem is vitamin D makes you happy only if you're taking care of vitamin A and vitamin B and vitamin C and vitamin E. Then vitamin D can make you happy. So let's look at that in terms of your job of your partner can only be to make you happier. Your job is to be happy, period. You cannot look at your partner as responsible for your happiness. Otherwise, you're a child dependent on a parent. Indeed. And that's your fault. You need to take care of yourself. Don't blame your partner. Wake up. You know, we got to um, just go ahead. I was going to say, if you've been stuck in that pattern for a long time, how do you shift into actually, I need to take the responsibility now and realize that 90% of my unhappiness is really me. Is there a quick shift that you can you know, give people you know, to do? Knowing it is helpful, but it doesn't mm -hmm. do anything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> telling people you shouldn't steal it doesn't keep them from stealing telling people to love all the time doesn't allow them to love these are biological realities okay so here with now let's look at biology and fact we have this thing called the amygdala when we feel danger threatened unloved unsupported what happens is blood flow goes to the amygdala as that means as soon as you're already listening to your fake news that you're telling yourself it's already happening, okay? So, so now you're feeling I'm blaming my partner. You actually, if you're blaming your partner, you believe yourself. You're blaming your partner, okay? Yeah. So what you can know at that time is that your amygdala is firing in the back part of your brain and blood flow is stopping to the front part of your brain. So you've got to go, oh yes, all my woes are my partner. Oh, it's my partner's fault. They, I give you 50 evidence. I can tell you why all the reasons they're wrong and they're bad and I'm so good. That's what women will tend, tend to do is I do all the good stuff. He does the bad stuff. <laughs> why do they do that by the way? Is because if you're blaming and criticizing your partner, you're not loving. And women know that their greatest happiness and fulfillment and is their goodness and their lovingness. That's what women, mm -hmm. women are, are the oceans of love. And so if you're not doing your thing as a woman, being the ocean of love, you feel guilty. 
So to avoid feeling guilty, like I'm a bad person, you justify it in your mind. I do this for him. I do this for him. Women are busy thinking about all that they do for him. And if they haven't done enough, they'll do more just to justify why they don't feel loving. Wow. <laughs> now, <Yes. laughs> this is real. This is real stuff. Now, men, on the other hand, our thing is not love, okay? Our love, ours is power, okay? Men are about power. Now, I'll explain this in a minute. Look what I can do, look what I can do, look what I can do, look what I can accomplish, look what I've achieved, look what, how, I, how can I help you? There's a problem, let me solve the problem. There's a fire, let me put out the fire. The country's in danger, I'll go join the army, I'm gonna protect everybody, give me a parade. Mm. You know, this is what all what men are about, always have been, do the dirty, dangerous, difficult things, do the things that say, look what I can do. So men are gonna go, look what I can do. Women are more like, look how loving I am, how beautiful I am, how giving I am, how generous I am, how forgiving I can be, all about love. That's your self-esteem is primarily about feminine energy. Then there's yeah. masculine energy. Now what's confusing today is we, now we are such conscious beings and we are, we're more evolved species. It happened this last century. We are a more evolved species, which means that as a man, I can be feminine and I can be masculine. A woman can be masculine, a woman can be feminine. And here's mm -hmm. the ironic truth, which is it's easier for women to be masculine than feminine. And it's wow. easier for men to be feminine than masculine. So let's look at examples of men being feminine and women being masculine. Examples of men being feminine is playing games. See, the feminine side of us is the purpose of life for our feminine side is to be happy. Yeah. So playing games makes you happy. Drinking alcohol makes you happy. Mm. pornography makes you happy <laughs> uh, all these things oh I, i'm just gonna do all these things being lazy makes me happy being angry actually makes me happy now if you look at it, <laughs> any of those things any of those things and violence makes me happy if i feel you've hurt me i'm gonna get revenge mm. they, they, revenge i mean what do they do in the movies they, they they do it more carefully now but in the old days they would just set up the bad guy is so bad and the good guy he loses his wife and his children and the bad guy is so bad. And the good guy uh, spends a whole movie training and getting knocked down till finally, and the bad guy keeps saying, I'm going to keep killing people because of you. <laughs> so finally, <laughs> the good guy kills the bad guy, tortures him, rips his arms off, throws him off the cliff. And everybody goes, yay, yay, we just were violent. Yeah, I guess you've justified why we can get pleasure out of that. <laughs> Yes, when it's justified, it's never justified. That's not justified. Mm. That's the problem with us, you know, is, is we have to justify our violence instead of looking for another way. I remember years ago when I was talking about nonviolence and love and one of my longer seminars where people actually go deeper into their feelings and get to this mm. place of what are we here for? And truly deeper than a man wanting power is his, is his wanting to love. Power wow. with love is pure balanced masculinity. And women power with love is balanced femininity, women on their male and female side. And this was a guy, and I'm talking about, you know, violence and how primitive it is and that we are more evolved than that if we can access that. Mm. And he said, you know, John, it was quite impressive. He says, I'm general so-and-so, so-and-so, and I was in World War II. And mm. unless we killed Hitler, Unless we had that war, we would all be subjecting ourselves to tyranny right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I know that's the story we tell ourselves. That all makes sense. But let me ask you, since you're a general, have you had many nights where you wondered while your soldiers, you knew you were sending them to death, you're sending them to death. Every, soul, every general knows that. We're yeah. sending them that they're gonna die. Some of my guys are gonna die. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered could there be another way? And the whole room just froze. And he said, yes, I've always wondered. I wish there could be another way. Good, now wow. you can look for that. There is another way. It starts at home. Mm. We learn how to get what we want without being violent. We learn how to stop being monkeys. There is another way. And we have to start in our own lives to find that other way. And any time that you're angry, you're violent. This is, not, this is not love. This mm. is hurting yourself and hurting others, withholding your love. Indeed. But, you know, we are monkeys. Remember, we're trying to be humans up here and we have this option. 
And I mentioned before, it's easier for women to be men and it's easier for men to be women because if your body, your biology is such that you're a woman, you're born with a woman's biology, mm. it hurts more to feel uh, rejected as a woman than rejected as a man because that's not really who you are. It's a part of who you are, but it's not who mm. you are. Your essence in this lifetime is feminine. Now that's mm. biologically true now, and that's a concept. And for me as a man, if I fail in terms of my mission in this world, my purpose and my mission to make a difference, that's very painful. I have failed as a man. But wow. if I fail in, in masturbating too much or playing games <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> If I fail, Hopefully that won't keep you up at night. <laughs> if I fail at watching six hours of news, that's not gonna. It's gonna make me not feel so great. But <laughs> I wasted all that time and energy. Well, I go to sleep and forget it. You see, Indeed. it's much more painful to lose a love on your male side if you're a man. Not so painful mm -hmm. if you lose love on your female side. You know, if somebody says, "John, you're not good. You're not good." Oh, okay, I'm bad. I'm bad. Actually, a lot of men feel self-esteem and they go, "I'm bad." <laughs> it's rejected <laughs> their feminine. Actually, the only way they can feel masculine, as opposed to, "I'm good. I make a difference. I'm great." That's mm -hmm. masculinity in its positive state. Now, everything I'm saying, you can go, "Oh, this sounds good, John," but I disagree with all that. And then let's go a step further. Biology. That's I had to go through all this resistance to develop these ideas. Yes. Biologically, women need more female hormones to be happy. And biologically, men need more male hormones to be happy. Now, women need male hormones. Women and men need more female hormones, or they need female hormones. But there has to be a balance. Indeed. You know, men, men need to make, make 10 to 30 times more testosterone than women to be happy. Mm -hmm. When men's testosterone levels drop, it's a hormone, uh, he will become unloving, period. He becomes angry, irritable. Anger, think about that one. Everybody thinks anger is testosterone. Actually, anger is estrogen, high levels, peak levels of estrogen in a man and low wow. levels of testosterone. That's the biological state. You so he's just out of balance. <laughs> that's exactly right. He's on his mm. female side. All violence is men on their female side. Mm. A violence which is perpetuated by anger and hurt, all that stuff and revenge, all that is men on their female side. And is it the same for women? Um, are they out of balance, but just the other way around? Well, we look at what exactly the other way around. When women are unhappy, I, I, I mean, I spent my life talking to unhappy women, so I have a good, a good, and not all women are unhappy, by the way. My mother wasn't. Um, but so always curious to me why women are unhappy because I grew up with a mother who was very happy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was very lucky. Made you dig, I mean, made you dig a bit deeper as well to find out, right? Yeah, it made me curious. I, you know, I look at people as like they're nuts, and so I became a psychologist to understand. Mm. Uh, you know, when you have a really loving, nurturing relationship with your parents, you don't you grow up. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, okay? I have all these human things, monkey things inside of me. It's just I have a better management system for it. And I try to teach people what that management system is. So what happens for women when they're in my office is they'll feel overwhelmed. That's the beginning stages of depression for women is overwhelmed. And then they feel resentful. And then they feel shut down. And then they mm -hmm. want a divorce, okay? It's generally this feeling of, I have to do everything. You know, I haven't heard a man ever say, oh, bummer, I have to do everything. Maybe if he's way on his female side, I might've heard it a few times. But what men say is no matter what I do, it's never enough for her to be happy. Yeah, that resonates. It's and, the and, very male yeah. and very female statements. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what men say. Men say, what I do is never enough to make her happy. And what she says is I do so much and I don't get back. See, she's busy, busy, busy. I'm doing this, I get nothing back. I give and I give and I don't get back. I have nothing left to give and so I have to leave. So justify, she justifies her heart closing so she's not a bad person by saying, I've tried, I've done this, I've done this. As opposed to, think about the business world for a moment. Let's get out of the uh, defensiveness of people in relationships. 
if, if, if your business has failed over and over and over, don't, don't you kind of eventually get that I'm doing the wrong things? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, yes. And, and to you, be fair, hopefully you learn quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, it may be you're with the wrong person. Okay. You could be doing the wrong thing. There, there's, maybe. That, that's, a, that's a reality. But in most cases, you spend a lot of long time looking for the right person and you do fall in love with them and you do feel good with them for quite a while. And then you wonder what happened. Well, what I'm explaining is what happens is that when you're in a love relationship, you feel safe. And when you feel safe, unresolved issues from childhood come up. Mm. So now, when, instead of being a little upset with your partner, you're 90 times more upset. Everything is fake news. Everything is more than what it really is. You know, he's ignoring you. He's in his cave. That's, again, why you have to understand men are from Mars. It helps a lot. Is if he's ignoring you, He's just worked all day. He needs used up his testosterone. He needs to rebuild his testosterone. And mm. relaxing helps men to rebuild testosterone. Forgetting their problems helps men build, rebuild their testosterone by doing mm. something that stimulates a little testosterone. And it builds up, but he doesn't use it up. You don't want to wow. use up. You want to build up. So that's cave time. And then he's like available. But women don't instinctively understand that because they don't need to make 30 times more testosterone. Women need to make more estrogen. And estrogen is produced when you express how you feel is one thing. When you, when you get help, when you get help, that will also mm. increase estrogen. When you feel, I need help, you're ester and you anticipate getting it. So when women complain, it's because really every complaint is a hidden request, okay? It's a request, <clears throat> but it's a request that monkeys make because they don't know how to speak, okay? They have no intelligence. So complaining doesn't work and never has worked, but speaking can work if you do it from a place of love as a request. Mm. So a request, <clears throat> you have to do it the right way. It's an art. Everything takes a little knowledge and practice mm. to do. Throw a ball into a basketball hoop is nothing. <laughs> but it takes a lot of practice. And ironically, even, even if you're like a superstar basketball player, you miss all the time. And towards the end of the game, you're tired. You get one of those free throws to get points. You miss it. And nobody gets upset with you because they know mm. you're tired. This is the guy who can do 50 in a row when he's in shape. But at the end yeah. of a game, he's running the whole time. He throws it. He misses it. Nobody gives him a hard time because they all know he's out of balance. He's exhausted. He's tired. Wouldn't mm. that be great if our partner's in a bad mood and we don't get upset with them? We just go, they're tired. See, when they're in a bad mood. It's like they're in a wheelchair. You can't say, if you love me, you will get up and walk. Yeah. You know, and, and that's an amazing reflection, just giving them that compassion, I suppose, and you yes. know, acknowledging that their actions it's not about you. <laughs> yeah, not it's ninety percent yourself, as you said earlier. So, and, and it's ninety percent their stuff if they're misbehaving. I mean, Indeed. here's a, a fun example I've been using is that I've had some men say, "Oh, my wife, she's just like so negative. She's complaining. She wants more. I can't satisfy her." And I go, <laughs> I go, so you're so loving, huh? And he goes, "Yeah, yeah." I said, <laughs> so when you talk about your wife, you certainly don't sound very loving to me. You sound pretty negative. <laughs> He's See, he's justifying his negativity. We justify our negativity by blaming our partners. But yes. we don't want to look at the fact that we are negative, period. And we're mm. not loving. And how do we become loving? That's the next part of our conversation. Mm. Which is, if women are in fight or flight, they're not loving. If men are in fight or flight, they can't. You can't be loving if you're a monkey. Yeah. Okay? Unless, unless you feed and... You know, if you're a monkey and they're in fight or flight and you give them food, <clears throat> they'll calm down. So, <laughs> I love but, how we're breaking this down to animal psychology. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, brilliant. It's good, uh, but it works. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, with with a, because um, we, we really want to deal with, we're moving towards the violence which is going on in people's homes. Yes. And it could be quiet violence, physical violence, emotional violence, but there's a lack of love that's inevitable. It's going on in a lot of homes, not everybody. They're watching too much TV. They're missing all their vitamin A, B, C. They're just getting vitamin D and that will never be enough. They're stuck yeah. with their partners. We need to create this distance. 80% separate from our partner, 20% together. Very, mm -hmm. very important. 
you cannot appreciate the 20% unless you've got your 80% first. Yeah. So that's your stuff. And then the 90, 10 principle comes up. It's all your stuff except for a little bit. So let's start taking responsibility for our happiness Two, Let's find balance. We're out of balance. Don't speak. If you talk, if you're a man and you're out of balance, it means you're grumpy, you're irritable, you're angry, you're defensive. Defensiveness, that's mean argumentative, is fear. He doesn't know he's afraid, but you only defend yourself if you're afraid of getting hurt. <laughs> you know? If you're super bad, you don't have to defend. You just stand there and you say, shoot me, no problem. Okay, so mm. because we're defending ourselves, justifying ourselves, all the ways we do, I do this, but you don't do that. All that defensive stuff is because you're afraid. And that's fight or flight. You either argue or you run. This is fight or flight. This is the center back here that gets activated. Yes. And if you look at what happens in our hormones when that center is activated, and again, for women, they're on their male side, they're complaining. See, they're complaining. They're trying to solve the problem by changing him rather than solving the problem by changing themselves. And that's mm -hmm. what sharing your feelings will do. Because see, when women come to me in therapy and feel better later, it's because they're not trying to change me. That's the magic of therapy, okay? The magic yeah. of talking to somebody you're not upset with about what you're upset about is magic for women. Because for women, it means they can share and they can anticipate having somebody hear them. And then when somebody hears them from a place of love, they can let go of their negativity. That's what I found out about a women. They need to talk, they need to share. But if they talk and share as a complaint, men don't listen, men will never listen, let's be realistic. And also you will not <laughs> produce estrogen. Okay, you don't make estrogen Definitely. if you're trying to change somebody. Those women make estrogen in my office because they're not trying to change me. Maybe a little bit, they're trying to get me to think they're wonderful. <laughs> but, <laughs> but once they feel safe, they already realize I have no investment in making them right or wrong. And I'm trying to hear them. That's what produces the estrogen inside. And other things can produce estrogen. So let's <clears throat> think about the single people at home as well. Let's think about the women and men who need their 80% without depending on their partner. And then we'll end our conversation with something couples can do that will dramatically improve the situation. Wonderful. And so the single person is the same as the person in a relationship because you've got to get 80% of your happiness not dependent on someone. So we're really all in the same boat. How to get out of the fight or flight position is use the front part of the brain. How do you use the front part of the brain? Well, one of the most easy ways to get yourself into a better person that you are, you might call it your higher self, I'm calling it your human self, is <laughs> learning something new. Wow. Whenever you learn something new, you're in the front part of the brain. Mm. That's it. Learn wow. something new. So now there's different types of learning. There's learning something new that can also stimulate estrogen. And there's learning something new that can also stimulate testosterone. Women need to learn something new that will produce estrogen. So go online, get an aerobics class, aerobics class with other women. In your mind, the subconscious mind thinks you're actually with other women to a certain extent, you're getting that benefit. When women yeah. are together, estrogen goes up. Female energy increases, safety increases. You know you're gonna be understood. So mm. get in an imaginary environment. A real environment is better, of course, but you get close to it in an imaginary environment where other women are all doing exercise together and there's somebody telling you what to do. Whenever somebody tells you what to do and you yield to them because you need their advice, you need their direction, estrogen goes up. Wow. That's why, that's why women love, you know, if you, women love to dance, uh, <clears throat> some women will put it that way, with a man leading. You know, mm -hmm. I was just doing one interview and women would say, yes, you know, I remember there was this one guy who really knew how to dance and all the women were lined up. It's not like they want a relationship, they just wanted to dance with him <laughs> because he could, yes. he could take you where you wanted to go. It's a he, wonderful feeling. I'll attest to that too. It's a wonderful feeling having someone take you where you want to go and feeling safe. You get out of your mind and you just go in the flow and enjoy yourself. So dancing is really good. If you've got a partner who can dance, you can take dance lessons online. He's learning something that will boost his testosterone. 
because he's learning how he can make his wife happy. He can fulfill that mission. One, he's learning how to let go and surrender and she gets to then experience that. But not all couples are gonna do dancing. That's just one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is singing. Doing karaoke online is a really, really good thing. Doing karaoke yeah. with, with people, there's some people are doing it uh, in uh, Zooming and doing karaoke. Uh, that's really, really good. You're feeling you're with a group and you're singing. Mm -hmm. Your voice is being heard and you're not trying to change anybody. You're seeking to harmonize and it feels good to you. So you feel, oh, I need this. So the place of I need and I can get, I need and I can get. This is that big estrogen stimulator. Now, mm. some women might say, oh, are you saying we all have to be these uh, weak women? No, <laughs> to need help is not weakness, it's wisdom. Think about it. If you had a choice to say, I can do everything myself, I don't need anybody. And that was, I have the power to do whatever I want. I move my hand, I can move the sun, okay. Now you, you're so powerful, or you have another power, which is I move my hand and people do things for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I have to- I prefer the latter, to be fair. What is that? I prefer the latter, to be fair. It's always nice to have things done for you. Of course, that's feminine yeah. power. <laughs> Women have forgotten feminine power. Feminine power is getting people to do stuff for you so you don't have to do it all. I love that. Yeah, it's so beautiful to know that's what femininity is about. And when women are not happy, they're always saying to me, where I got this idea, <laughs> is they're always saying, I do everything. <laughs> and, and if I could say, I do everything, I'd be happy. <laughs> I'd be like <laughs> Superman. I can do everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, men frame it differently if they have to do everything. <laughs> because doing, if you can do things successfully, it produces testosterone. Mm. men need more testosterone to lower their stress. Women need more estrogen for much of the time to lower their stress. Sometimes what they need is more progesterone, which means doing what you love to do, what you enjoy doing. That's progesterone. Mm. Doing, yes. what you have, doing what you have to do is producing testosterone. So yes, mm. we have to do stuff. And so you're going to have low estrogen. So try to balance it by anticipating when you're done doing what you have to do, that you're gonna get a big reward of high estrogen. So anticipation is a powerful tool, which is mm. to anticipate getting support when you need it. So if you're way on your male side for part of the day and you're a woman, just anticipate getting, going to your female side and getting support where you say, okay, now I need help. Now what kind of help does superwoman need? I'll tell you what help she needs. She can't sleep well at night. <laughs> she can't feel happy and she can't have an orgasm. <laughs> so Superwoman, <laughs> basically what Superwoman needs is, sure, I can do everything, but I'd rather not. It'd make mm. me, help me a lot. It, it would help me so much to relax if you would do that for me. See, that's mm. Superwoman on her female side. So when I take my wife on a romantic date, I open the door and in the beginning I had to say, cause she's quite an independent woman. I have to say, now honey, I know you can open the door for yourself, but you do so much for so many people all day long. Tonight, let me take care of you. That's very attractive. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a power. It's yeah. every woman just have, but see, a lot of women go, no, I, I don't want you opening the door for me. No, I want to prove to you how powerful I am. I want to prove to you I don't need you. I don't need help. Needing help is weakness. So this whole ironic feminist movement in the country is about teaching women femininity as weakness. And mm. powerless, yes, yes, women have been mistreated in the past. Women have been powerless. They lost their female power. Men lost their masculine power. Both sides lost. It's not just one side or the other. Our culture changed and it hasn't updated itself because mm -hmm. as women become more aware, more conscious, more evolved, they want to express their male side. They want to compete. And in that place of getting to their male side, they forget their female side. And mm -hmm. you compete with a man, guess what happens? He loses interest in you. <laughs> That's why girls yes. always know, don't be too smart in school or guys won't love you. 
Because guys, then suddenly you're competing with him. Now that's a foolish, that's a foolish belief. I, I'm not saying, but that's why people would say that. Males right. are threatened by strong women. Because if you're independent, you don't need us. It's like, you know, I've got this shop and I make money and somebody's got a shop down the street. I get jealous and they're getting all the customers. People don't need me anymore. I get threatened. I get into my worst side. So as women move to their male side, historically, men get threatened by that and become misbehaving men. They try to control yeah. women. They try to hold women back. And then, of course, women then fight. And then when you fight, you get a dysfunctional man, you get a dysfunctional woman. Mm -hmm. So it's this, this transition of women becoming more conscious, more independent, and also men becoming more heartfelt. You know, women always say, where are the romantic men? You know, these heartfelt <laughs> men. What happened? What happened to romance? Romance never existed. Romeo and Juliet is a perfect example of romance, right? They can't live without each other. I can't live. I'll die without you. That's this very romantic I, feeling, right? It ended badly. <laughs> it ended quite badly. It, it it, they stay, They lived for one day. They were married one day. Now, if they had been married for six months, a year, two months, all that would have gone away. <laughs> never, never thrived. And yet today we want it and we feel like we can have it. They didn't feel like they could have it in the past unless you're a young teenager, which they were. And we can have it. I have it. 34 years with my wife. Great sex. I say just two days ago, I had the best sex I've ever had in my life. Okay. It just <laughs> doesn't have to go down if you understand biology. Your relationship needs to feed your testosterone in men. Your relationship needs to feed estrogen in women. But only 20%. 80% has to come from inside. 80% has to come from your activities. So remember, we came back to COVID and people went home, their stress levels were up, they're missing their 80%. You need to get into your front part of your brain, otherwise you're going to be in fight or flight. And if Indeed. you listen to watch, if you watch the news more than 30 minutes, you're in fight or flight. You're completely mm -hmm. off into some fake news world. It's not as bad as everybody says. Yes, 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 in New York and in New Jersey and a few places. The, the only problem they were saying is the hospitals are overrun. Now we're learning, by the way, that putting people on ventilators, only 80% survive. So maybe, you know, if you had a drug you gave to somebody, eight only worked for 20% of the people, wouldn't you consider another option? <laughs> yeah. I think absolutely. we should have thrown the ventilators out a long time ago and figured out another thing. And they are figuring out the other countries. They're doing different things. They're saying, okay, that's you know, you get some sort of symptomatic relief. Sometimes there's improvement. Let's find something else instead of getting stuck on the same things. Mm. It's that this is our problem. If you're having problems in your relationship, you're stuck doing the same thing. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> but you can't stop it unless you have another alternative to try. So the trying here, the alternative I'm giving for couples is learn new things. And for a woman, one is I mentioned dancing, singing, learning new songs. Uh, reading different books. That's always going to be something that makes you use your brain using your imagination. Uh, it's much more powerful to read, uh, to educate, to stimulate the front part of the brain than watch TV. The reason mm -hmm. for that is it requires your front part of your brain in order to imagine and applying what you're reading. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you're watching TV, it's a visual thing, kind of like you go into this child's, uh, hypnotic state of suggestion okay so it's too passive it's too passive reading engages you and causes you to use your imagination uh that's a b is learning new things uh cooking if you like to cook take cooking classes online my daughter's doing that uh gardening classes my daughter's doing that uh for me it's researching cures uh for me it's researching because i have a mission to help the planet and help mm. people in their relationships. So, uh, you know, I have no stress right now. I mean, fortunately, I-, I You look very happy, I have to say, which oh, is amazing. I'm, <laughs> I'm on vacation. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to brag about it because some people are really, really suffering. So I'm trying to give this advice to help. Um, yes. The learning new things, but I am learning new things. See, I'm researching all the time. And mm. that's A, from the point of view of my mission. So second is, for sure, I don't masturbate. Men, you have to understand when you masturbate, you lose zinc. When you lose zinc, you can't make testosterone. 
Does men need to know that? Okay. Wow. It's not the time. Maybe later when you're on vacation, there's not the time to do any masturbating. Stay away from pornography. It's the worst thing you could do at this time. It will deplete your testosterone. It will put you more into fight or flight. These are facts. These are facts. They've done the tests on this. And they mm -hmm. show that it causes your testosterone to dramatically drop if you do pornography. It also causes you to become zinc deficient. Which, by the way, when they this um, medicine, uh, I, I don't know the name of it. I don't. It's a drug that they were the the president was promoting for a while. And, yes, I remember. Uh, I don't remember the name either. Now, now our system is not doing it. They're doing it in other countries, and it's working. Mm. It's working, and they're also giving them zinc. They give them that yes. medicine and they give zinc. Why zinc? Because all these men are low testosterone men. Why twice, two to three times more men die? Because they're low testosterone men. As soon as you start taking your heart medication, your testosterone levels start dropping. And the reason you got heart disease is because you had low testosterone. There's no such thing as a man with a heart attack who has healthy testosterone levels. It's always too high estrogen and low testosterone causes heart disease. All you have to do to raise your testosterone, men, is proven exercise. Don't over-exercise, don't under-exercise. Aerobic exercise, and if you have more muscles, some weightlifting. Only mm -hmm. once or twice a week, that's it. <clears throat> Only 20 minutes. It's not a big deal. Don't be yeah. passive, don't be sedentary, and all right, get out of the health stuff, come back to relationship, John. So, women, so can, okay. watch, so like, women can watch the relationship, uh, the cooking, uh, cooking classes, they can buy things, okay? You can buy things online. There's nothing more estrogen stimulating than buying stuff. But the secret to it is don't go broke. Buy little stuff. Get a box that comes in the, you know, Amazon. You just order a little thing, a little thing, a little thing. Shopping is a major estrogen stimulator. That's why you go to the mall. No wonder we love it. <laughs> and why do more women shop? Okay, because it stimulates <laughs> estrogen. Okay, so these are some things women can do. And for men, not that you can't buy stuff, you can buy stuff like my, my, one of my son-in-laws. He's buying all this computer technology. See, it's giving more power, more efficiency, more confidence and make more money and you know, all. It's like using, your, using this time to improve your capacity to make a difference and to make money. Because often mm -hmm. making money is what people who make a difference make more money, generally speaking. So it's power mm -hmm. to make a difference. Not that women can't do that, but that's going to raise your testosterone and nothing wrong with raising your testosterone as long as your estrogen is being stimulated as well and it's going to higher mm. levels. Mm. Okay, so I, I promised you a wonderful technique. I think we're running close to our end time here. Yes, we are. So what to do? Here's if you're, now that's all that information is for people alone or people in relationship. These are things you can do to balance, to lower your cortisol levels. So this is not such a bad time. And it's actually mm. a little bit more fortunate time for people who are alone because you're forced to go for your 80% if you have the education on what to do. Absolutely. For, yeah. for people who are in relationships, it's harder because you keep getting caught up in thinking your partner should be making you happy and your unhappiness is their fault. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why I put so much emphasis on that. Not their fault. Fake news. Don't look at it. Okay, do something for yourself at that time. Now, what does it mean to do something for yourself at that time? Don't talk to your husband unless you have something good to say. Done. Don't talk to your husband unless you have something good to say. Don't make eye contact with your husband unless you feel a lot of love in your heart. And don't stare at him. Just don't look <laughs> Why? Because it's- I love you, it. It's so simple. Yeah, it is so simple if you really understand it. And why it works so easy for me, because I really understand it, but I spent 40 years teaching these ideas. But eye contact causes mirror cells to activate as well. So mm. if you're going to look at somebody and you're feeling like disappointed with them, <laughs> they're going to be disappointed right back at you and all their buttons get pushed. And if your 90% is being activated, you will activate their 90% just by staring at them. So don't look at them. And if you don't have anything loving to say, don't talk to them. If you have unloving things to say, write it down and don't show it to them. Here's mm. one exercise women can do, and men can do it too if you're having lots of emotions. Definitely don't speak them out loud. Write it out and look at, try to use more, emo, identify emotions, anger, sadness, fear, regret, what you mm. want, what you wish. 
and then you'll feel your for forgiveness, appreciation, try to be a more understanding in your letter, like you're talking to your partner, go through all those emotions. Then write a letter to yourself from your partner, imagining what you want to hear. Now, ironically, uh -huh. that has a very powerful effect because if you're writing something to yourself, your subconscious mind, you read it, it's like that person said it to you. And so wow. now you say, then you write a letter back and say, oh, you know, your love, they gave you all this loving, understanding, caring response. Your love, as you imagine, if they said that to you, that makes me feel happy. That makes me feel safe. That makes me feel glad. Now you get to feel happy, safe, and glad. You just generated those feelings inside yourself. And then you can cancel all that, but, but he'll never do that. Stop, stop, stop. That's your predict. You're taking responsibility for your happiness. That's a way to find your happiness again. So that's one thing. Now, man can do that as well, no doubt about it. And the next thing to do is this is a game couples can play. So this is if you have a partner in your home, you can do this. And it'll make it easier to supercharge your emotions in the presence of your partner because your partner can cast mm -hmm. tremendous effect on you. So it can look like this it's called Genie in a Bottle. Okay. For 20, this, it's a game you play. It's 20 minutes. And in that 20 minute window, he is the genie. Now, genies are all powerful. They live in a bottle. He's in, he's in his cave. And you say, you rub on the genie. Okay, rub on the bottle. The genie comes out. So what is rubbing? That's going to be a woman asking for help. So let's play genie in the bottle. Whenever you're ready to come out, I want to play genie in the bottle. So she can initiate or he can say, honey, when you want to play genie in the bottle, I'm ready. Okay, so... You play the game, it's only 20 minutes. And in that 20 minutes, she asks for whatever she wants. She asks, and that's called rubbing the bottle. Mm. If you don't ask, he doesn't do anything, he's just there. You have to ask for what you want, and you ask and ask and ask. You try to do as many asks as you can in 20 minutes. You don't ask anything that would require him to do something after the 20 minutes. So you wouldn't say, okay, I want you to finish up the taxes. Well, that's gonna take more than 20 minutes, not gonna happen. I want you right. to clean out the garage. Uh, I want you to always remember to turn out the lights when you leave the bedroom. That's something outside of this 20 minutes. This is 20 minutes. I want you to make me some orange juice. Boom. Your wish is my command. I am happy to satisfy. My joy is to do this for you. And then she says, oh, it makes me so happy. Thank you so much. And she asked for something else. Now, first five minutes, if you're angry with each other, this will be like drudgery, but you pretend you're actors on a stage, but it will, regardless whether you're feeling it or not, it will stimulate the hormones because she is asking and he is doing, and it's something that she would like that she now doesn't have to do. It should be something that she would enjoy receiving, something that feels good to her, something that she would normally do that now she is not going to do because he's going to do. So it's mm. not like she... When you're playing the game that you say, okay, I want you to go clean up the living room and I'm going to have to go do the laundry. No, it's you're present the whole time doing nothing. She does nothing while asking him to do things for her for 20 minutes. And, oh, I want you to wash up those dishes. You know, I want you to clean out that cabinet, move that thing over here, get him moving in response to your request. And the more significant that request is for your happiness, the better accept, accept, big things. You see, the, the wonderful thing about women that we men don't know, nobody taught us, is you can give a woman 50 roses, you're going to get a spike in estrogen, and it goes down. You can give mm. her one rose, you're going to get the same spike. Lots mm. of little things is what slowly raises a woman's estrogen, not right. one big thing. Now, one big thing can, if she's already got 80% going, and then you do a big thing, oh, it's a big thing. But actually, you can do a little thing when she's got 80% and it's a big thing. It's, it, this is the amazing thing about women. Now, when a woman's estrogen is really low, uh, she goes, oh, that's just a little thing. That's a little thing. It doesn't make me happy. You should do something big for me. But big won't do it either. What you do is a lot of little things will gradually raise her estrogen. That's why you, if you're really dry and you're a woman, you're going to need five minutes of pretending. Oh, this is so nice. I'd like you to do this go upstairs, get my lavender oil and come down here and give me a foot rub. And, mm. oh, that's so nice. Take off my shoes, take off my socks. Literally have him do everything. You do nothing during that time. And he, mm. he's your man. He's your servant. He's your genie for 20 minutes. And 
you know, some people say, well, what's in it for men? Is there a game for men? Should you change roles? I go, no, that's what's in it for men. It's when you're selflessly serving and being rewarded with a woman's happiness, number one testosterone booster on the planet. And wow. once you play this game quite a bit, you can also play the game before you go to bed and turn out the lights or have the lights on, whatever. So this could be <laughs> a foreplay basically is playing the game. And actually when you are playing the game, it's the essence of what relationships are really about. It's a woman ability to anticipate getting what she needs from someone who's gonna respond immediately and selflessly do things for her. Doesn't matter how big or little, selflessly doing. And it's how many things that makes the difference. So that's called Genie in a Bottle Game. And I hope everybody enjoys playing it. So many people are telling me how fun it is. I love that. And it's really simple as well. You can integrate it into your day, hopefully every day while you're at home and see what Absolutely. happens. Absolutely. I do it every day. And you can do the 10 minute version as well. Okay. It's literally just creating a space where she knows she can ask for little things. She's taking responsibility to get, what she, to get her vitamin D from him and he's getting his vitamin D from her. And at the same time, we did talk about that 80%. We really need to focus on learning new and different things. New and different, by the way. If, if you mm -hmm. like, let's say you have an exercise routine, you already do it, do a different one. Whenever you mm -hmm. do something new and different, it stimulates more dopamine. And for women that can raise their estrogen higher if they're feeling safe and they're depending on someone to guide them. Also yoga classes are really good too. Soft music, someone's guiding you and they're leading you. Uh, women and meditation is a big one. You see, meditation was originally taught to men. Uh, oh, wow. If you look at, at you see, I, I, I'm a master of meditation. I was a yogi for nine years, celibate yogi. I'm still a yogi. I still meditate. I mean, today, I did, today I only did two hours, but yesterday I did four hours. I do many hours mm -hmm. of meditation. It's, I'm an expert at it. It's wonderful. I spent years developing that. Nobody generally can do that unless you spent years doing it. And, mm -hmm. Uh, but anyway, when Buddha taught meditation, for example, it was mainly to men and mainly his disciples were men. There's some women along the way who are more evolved naturally because they're on their male side. Meditation is particularly helpful to rebuild our testosterone. Mm. Is that forget your problems. It's cave time. Wow. You know, I'm the guy who wrote the book on a man's cave. It all came because I actually was in a cave. I was a yogi. I know what being in your cave can do. And the whole point of meditation, at least one form of meditation, is to forget your problems, empty your mind. <laughs> That's why men always tell women, just forget it. Like women can just forget it. No, women don't just forget it. Their brain, their memory is actually eight times more active in fight or flight than a man's. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's, wow. <laughs> it's, a, it's called the hippocampus and it's twice as big in women than men. It's the memory. They, they're remembering everything under stress and men under stress. Our objective is to forget it. If you can forget your problems, there's nothing to be stressed about. And now we have the whole system of psychology say, oh, you shouldn't forget it. That's just denial. It's denial if it's a woman, if it's a man, forget it. Do something that makes you feel good and then go be good. Do make a difference. Mm. However, I will say, you know, that's a, a little tongue in cheek. Because when I do get upset about something, I'll go meditate, I'll rebuild my testosterone. First of all, I say, just forget what happened. Now I'll come back to feeling good. Then I reflect on what happened and always from the point of view, of, okay, what did she do wrong? It's pointless to say that. She can figure it out on her own someday. My job is to look at what I did wrong. That's the best attitude. Telling people what they do wrong doesn't work. If you're a mother, you can tell your kids, okay? Not your husband. If it's your wife, not your wife, you don't tell them. What you can do is when your heart's really loving, heart's open, your partner feels appreciated, respected, mm. honored, cared for, your heart's open. Then you can say, you know, when you do this, I'd really like you to do it that way. That's when you can ask for more, only when you're full. Only if you're mm. getting everything you need, basically, and you want to get more, then you can ask for more. But until you're experiencing fulfillment, you need to be giving unconditional love because your bank account's full. Then you can ask for more. Asking for more from a place of emptiness is only manipulation and it's not loving. So forget about asking for more. Learn to, you know, there's a one, I'm thinking about this movie called Hurricane. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know, it just came up. I suggest people go online, watch it if this is of re relevance. And it's about a guy who was completely abused. He was a great fighter. 
and mm. he was so good they 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 made it seem like he committed a crime and put him in jail but he was innocent they just didn't want him to win everything and so he was in jail and then these lawyers are trying to get him out and everything and i'm not going to tell you what happens in the end of the story but the key thing is he has his re revelation is whether i get out or not it doesn't matter he found forgiveness and that set him mm. free See, it's in forgiving that we're free and he said whether i'm in here or not if i can forgive i'm free to be mean and you know whitney houston her song knowing it can take away your dignity they can treat me this way you can't take away my dignity it's people who mm. are like have wisdom in their life they realize i can love myself i have a life i can create what i want i'm not dependent on what they say or do but for that extra 20 percent, you are and that's where relationships great sex romance all that stuff comes into play and you can just be super happy but back to meditation so i can meditate and rebuild my testosterone that's what buddha taught mainly to men because it rebuilds your testosterone now some men aren't going to meditate i get it but you when you're working out in the gym you're actually meditating you know so it, it, if body you, meditation <laughs> yeah yeah it's just do something it's a distraction and really a lot of men play golf for example that's a meditation you see it's it's doing something to forget your problems distracting yourself watching a football game on tv is a meditation because you're forgetting your problems and watching that so it's an a way to forget forgetfulness and then you need to come back to remember but too much can make you passive and weak and that's what happens to men if they do it too much everything good but in the right measure now for women being more on their male side, meditation can be extremely helpful for women, but not the traditional meditation where you're trying to forget your thoughts. Uh, you're trying to forget your life. What you want is a guided meditation where somebody mm. is leading you in a meditation, all kinds of guided meditations. Okay, now notice your breathing, breathe in, breathe out, relax, uh, notice your feet, notice your legs, notice your breasts, notice your arms, notice your face, take another deep breath. You see, as you go into that, then you're following. When you're mm -hmm. following for a purpose, the estrogen levels go up, your body starts to relax. Then you say, now we're gonna go on a journey. Imagine yourself, in a beautiful, beautiful place, you know, the o maybe at the ocean and there's a, there's a beautiful sunrise and the sky is red and yellow and orange and the waves are coming in and they come in and you hear the crashing of the waves and you look out on the ocean and you see, oh, there's whales and they're jumping up into the air. What an amazing scene that you see and you can feel the sand beneath your feet. What did we just do? We just teleported into a non-stressful environment. That's we did. as well. That's mm. guided meditation. See, there's so many different guided meditations. The web, the online, you can find all kinds of teachers doing guided meditations. And the key to it is don't do the same one. Do different ones, new and different, particularly at a time like this, do new and different uh, as, as a meditation. So that can be very helpful for women. It's helpful for men too. Uh, I tend to think men should also practice a little bit of the old fashioned meditation as well, which is quiet the mind. And they, they need training with that. There's various techniques to do. Uh, a good beginner's technique is transcendental meditation. Uh, that's yeah. what I started out with. Very, very good technique, a transcendental meditation. Uh, and women can do that as well. They have a male side now. I know many women that love transcendental meditation, but they're actually um, following the guru's advice. <laughs> and that's why, that's why it's an estrogen stimulator because you're doing what somebody's telling you to do. Okay. In yoga, for yeah. example, now in America, more women go to yoga classes than men. Now, why <laughs> is that? Because if I study yoga in India, you do it alone in India. Nobody did yoga together with other people. You learn how to do it from a teacher. Then you go and in your own place, you do it. You know, I remember when I, I went down to the Ganges and, and there weren't any, they're all in the woods. They're not out on the beach in the sun doing it. They're <laughs> doing it solitary. It's about being in your cave and doing your yoga, pushing mm -hmm. yourself. That's like going to the gym. You know, go look at all the gym rats, you know, they're all in there on their own. You know, they're not doing it together. They're doing their own thing. Whereas yeah. you get to the gym, you see all the women, they're all doing the same thing in a circle. And see, it's, it's, it's 
connectedness is our female hormones. It's independence is our male hormones. And being independent and connected is what we're looking at. You know, ultimately, that's the highest state. But sometimes we just need to be on our own. Uh, you know, something I learned a long time ago, which is if I was upset, I just go for a drive in my car. And I wondered again yeah. why, that, why that makes me feel good. If you mm -hmm. go for a drive in your car, you're in danger and you're also safe at the same time because you're a good driver. If you're not a good driver, it wouldn't be so relaxing, but I'm a super good driver and I've got fast car and I, I got brakes uh, and I know how to drive and I don't get tickets and I don't get in accidents but I, my wife thinks I'm an unsafe driver. <laughs> <laughs> she gets tickets. She gets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that's not, a, that's perhaps not the most winning thing to say though, is it? <laughs> well, it's, it's just the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And right. I'm a good driver. And so when I drive, which by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll acknowledge her now, which is we have a guy, we have a basic uh, agreement. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm driving in any way that feels unsafe to her, all she has to do is put her hands on the handle by the door mm -hmm. and I will immediately slow down and I and drive extremely differently from my normal way of driving, which is the way she drives. And I'm happy <laughs> to do that because that's my gift to her. And I put my hand on her thigh at that moment and I say, oh, I see I'm driving too fast. I'm happy to change for you, sweetheart. And oh. or I just simply will say, I did that for you and put my hand on her thigh and she smiles and she says, yes, you did. And I appreciate that. You see mm -hmm. how that little dynamic, how sweet that is, as opposed to you're going too fast and I slow down feeling controlled. Yeah. And I put my hand on her thigh and say, I did that for you. So no, you're a bad driver. You should drive safe. <laughs> Do you have the difference? Letting yeah, it be and that's just... to her. That's just evoking the love, you know, what you said at the beginning about how love was always the answer and it's those small loving always gestures sometimes. Find yeah. ways to find that love and then give that love unconditionally. And certainly our love is certainly conditional, but it's conditional based on what I'm able to do my 80%. And then mm. there's a certain, there's an unconditional conditional because if I give my love freely to her, and she doesn't respond to it, then, okay, I gave my love freely, but there's not that much bang for it for me. If I mm -hmm. give my love freely and it actually has a big effect, now I become happier. I'm in the, I'm in the super zone. And for her, she can give, give her love freely and that feels good, but to give your love freely in response, you get more love, then it goes into mm -hmm. that higher zone. But, mm -hmm you're not going to complain if you're not in the higher zone. The higher zone is always extra. You know, it's the, the regular, the green zone, the red zone, red zone is higher. Green is happy. That's our job. That's what we have to get. And particularly at this time, it's an opportunity to focus on what can I do to make me happy? We got some insights on, on estrogen and testosterone types of education that can mm -hmm. help boost our hormones. We have a game to play for couples to play. And then we'll compose with one, one of the, the darkest area of relationships is violence. Violence yeah. only happens, only happens when men get angry and they talk. It doesn't happen any other way. And violence wow. only happens when men are angry and women ask questions and continue talking. Don't mm -hmm. talk. Don't talk. It won't happen. You'll be faced with your own demons inside and you want to go talk to them. Don't talk to them. Go talk to somebody else. And if you're a man and you're on your female side, go drive your car. What happens is you're, you're basically in danger, but you're driving if you can drive safely. Uh, that will raise your testosterone. Go to the gym, work out your muscles. If you know how to meditate, meditate, do exercise, get out in nature, watch a funny movie. Watch a funny <laughs> movie is really good for men. And for women, you can watch a sad movie. <laughs> That'd be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a funny one too, though. Usually, sad movies are loving and touching movies. That's what I meant by it. You know, yeah. un unrequited love. You know, is always ah. Oh, you know, you can connect with that. Yeah. And, and for men, it's action movies as well, where you feel you saved the world, you got rid of the bad guys. That that these are helpful things at difficult times, but but mm -hmm. ultimately, 
come back to yourself with responsibility and give your love freely. John, thank you so much for your time. I know you've gone well over what oh, we had well discussed. Over, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Actually, 30 but, minutes. You, okay. but you just gave so much value to us on, you know, well, first of all, love is the answer to everything. And you've really unpacked yes. how love is the answer to everything from uh, exercise three times a week to meditating 20 minutes a day to not speaking when you're angry to only looking at someone with through the eyes of love beautiful thank you so much oh what a and, good summary um, <laughs> <laughs> and um if our beautiful audience would like to connect with you what other ways that they can do that of course we're happy to share on our inspired stage platform how they can do more with you or reach out Oh, well, that would be MarsVenus.com. And I want everybody to know that if you go to MarsVenus.com, uh, you can, in a minute, you can sign up for a free four-day class with me and my daughter, Lauren Gray. She is also a teacher. Uh, uh, she's better than me, quite honestly. You know, she's 34 and quite Aww. successful in all this. So she also and I teach a class together. Uh, that's free. So people can go there. A lot of the ideas I talked about today, I want to mention are in a book called Beyond Mars and Venus. So if you read Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, uh, we've changed in the last 30 years. So <laughs> we have the, indeed. The world has changed. And so we need additional insights, all this stuff about the hormones and various things like that. That's all in my book, Beyond Mars and Venus. I recommend that. And uh, if you're not having regular sex, then I recommend my book, uh, Mars, <laughs> Venus in the Bedroom. And if you're having challenges with your kids, the most important thing is to overcome your challenges with your partner. Your children will act out anything you're not dealing with. And then you resist them and they resist you. And a lot of the information on what you can then do for our children is in my book, Children Are From Heaven. So I'm mentioning all those books because there's plenty for us to learn. That's one of the things you can focus on learning Indeed. at this time, things that are relevant and helpful to be a better person. Indeed. And all very beautifully written too. Thank you so much. I hope you always stay as happy as you come across today. It's, it's really lovely to see. Oh, I feel so blessed in my life. So blessed. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay.